Hey guys, it's Sean from Crafts Elements, and in this video, I want to talk about some of the basic shop tools you're going to need to create things just like this. I find a lot of would be resin and wood artists are sort of intimidated by these things I see on Instagram, these beautiful shops, elaborate amounts of tools. You don't need that to do uh, basic, smaller jobs like this. Obviously, you need your resin and wood materials, but there's some core tools you're going to need. So I want to walk you around my shop, which, to be honest, is relatively basic compared to a lot of shops out there who are doing really high-end woodworking. But you're going to see that there's very little you need to actually make beautiful pieces like this. So one of the first things I want to talk about is saws. You're going to have your piece of wood. How do you cut it? You have table saws, miter saws, jig saws, band saws. What do you actually need? The tools that I use the most here in the shop are the table saw, which this is a very basic table saw. This is something that, you know, is high end for Home Depot, but it's not a high end saw by any means. You know, three, four, five hundred dollars for something like this. That's going to allow you to do rip cuts um, as well as uh, more precision cuts to uh, create different lengths or part partitions of wood. Something over here, it's a miter saw, chop saw, some people call it. It allows you to do obviously direct down cuts as well as adjust for angles if you wanted to do any angle cuts. Between most jobs you're going to do for those charcuterie boards, small tabletops, your miter saw and your table saw are going to be more than sufficient. However, if you didn't want to have a table saw, maybe you don't have the space for a table saw, you could get something like this, which is, uh, this. In, in this case, this is a, actually a track saw, but it's essentially the same as a skill saw or a circular saw, where you can use this saw as well as a guide or simply freehanding it to cut down uh, slabs of wood. Again, if you don't have the space for a table saw. For more precision cuts, creating handles, uh, or doing rough cuts or maybe circles, uh, a jigsaw. You definitely are gonna wanna have a jigsaw and something like this can be had for, you know, a plug-in one could be, you know, 89 bucks to something a little bit higher end, which uses a battery for a couple hundred dollars. Now, while we're on the topic of saws, I wanna talk about a bandsaw. Uh, a bandsaw, in most cases, if you're cutting uh, small or rather thin uh, wood stock, uh, such as, you know, inch, two inch, three inch, whatever pieces of wood, and you're cutting them to actually shape them, not cross cut them, uh, then a, a jigsaw basically does what a bandsaw does. A bandsaw, however, is much more convenient. Obviously, you don't have to strap down or clamp down your wood like you would with a jigsaw, but the premise is the same. You've got a really thin blade, which allows you to kind of move and shape and work around the wood. So if you wanted to cut a curve or a circle or, you know, some squiggly line in a wood, uh, you can't do that with a miter saw or a table saw. You can either use a jigsaw, bandsaw, or a scroll saw. Scroll saw is more for really fine woodworking with small pieces. Really, it's the, the bandsaw and the jigsaw that are going to do the bulk of that work. However, as you can see, this is a big machine. Bigger usually means more expensive. You know, with a jigsaw is a few, couple hundred dollars uh, at most, you're going to be spending, I think this machine from Laguna is like 15 or 1600 US, I believe. Um, you can certainly get cheaper ones, but you can also get really, really expensive ones that are, you know, 220 volt, made for industrial shops. Um, so really, you don't need to go something, uh, you don't need to get a, a bandsaw like this until you really are going to step up your game and you're doing high volume or really high precision work. Uh, again, using the example of the security board that we introduced at the beginning of this video, uh, you really don't need this. And in fact, you know, I've been in this particular shop here for three and a half years. I only got this machine like three months ago, two months ago, and I've been making all of our other stuff with my other three saws. Jigsaw, table saw, miter saw. Coming back to the bench, I want to talk about uh, wood prep, but specifically live edge wood prep, because a lot of these resin wood projects are using live edge, i.e. natural edge wood, and you cannot keep the bark on the wood when you're using it with wood and resin. Well, in general, you don't really want to keep the bark on the wood because it's eventually going to uh, expand or contract, dry out and fall off, and it's going to look terrible. So you need to be able to remove that bark from your wood. Now, I do have a video on debarking wood slabs again in this YouTube channel. Uh, so I'd recommend you check that out, but just a really quick primer on what tools you would need to kind of get the basic amount of stuff done. Uh, something like this is, a, I, I call this a bark removal knife, but I think it's actually called a draw knife. And essentially what you do is you set up your, uh, your slab, bark out, and then you go right into the bark and then you just pull back. Uh, you've got to lose a little bit of power, but this really does a really good job of getting under the bark and it just peels right off. 
for any bark that doesn't peel off, you would use uh, a high... Uh, a, <laughs> for any bark that doesn't peel off, uh, maybe some bark that's left over, you have a couple of different options. You can use a sander, like a power sander with like a, a low grit sanding disc, like maybe a 60 grit or an 80 grit, which means it's really coarse. A lower grit means more coarse. High grits are really fine. Uh, or you can step it up and use something like this. Again, really optional. This is probably something you don't need, especially if you're not doing a lot of these and you're not working with a lot of live edge wood. But a shaping disc is a hard metal disc and it's very, very sharp. It's got all these little burrs on it and that attaches to any handheld grinder. And this will literally allow you to go to town to shape uh, wood and just, just go through wood uh, and be able to get that bark off really, really quickly. But again, really this is an optional item. The basics to take the bark off, draw knife, uh, some chisels. These are really basic Home Depot chisels, which are essentially just, I mean, you would obviously use this for, um, you know, wood, um, wood carving and doing things like uh, inlays and stuff as well, but you can also use them for removing bark. And essentially it's just as easy as taking a wood chisel, taking any hammer and just working the bark off the side of the material. So yes, that covers what you would need for wood prep. Now, if we're talking about working with wood or resin in general, PPE is really important. Whether you're cutting, sanding, mixing resin, pouring resin, you need proper PPE. Uh, it's 2022 when I'm making this video, so at this day and age, you probably already know what an N95 mask is, but you're gonna need either N95 masks or something like this, uh, a respirator. Uh, this is a, I think an, uh, an N, I don't know if this is a P95, yeah, it's P95 which is made for more particulate matter and uh, odors and like toxic chemicals like this like would help with uh, resin uh, or like high uh, high VOC wood finishes where you don't want to breathe all that stuff in. Something like a P95 ventilator or sorry respirator uh, is what you're going to want versus an N95 mask. But in general an N95 mask, replaceable masks like these guys will work just as well. Here in protection, although uh, as a teenager, I used to listen to really loud music and have my headphones on all the time, so my ears are ringing all the time. Anyway, I'm not really sure what this, this does for me, but um, hearing protection is important if you're using uh, a saw, bandsaw, and especially the planer. Planer, planer can be really, really loud. And of course, eye protection. And you really want to focus on goggles rather than just basic safety glasses, especially if you're working with wood uh, and you're cutting a lot of things where you could have wood chips flying. They, get un they can easily get under a pair of glasses, and these are not you're not expensive like PPE and like this is really easy to come by and it's not expensive Home Depot Amazon Lowe's etc all right now moving on to some of the fun stuff which is the actual resin uh, that you'd be using with your resin projects uh, and of course the molds which are supplied by our company crafted elements um, we've partnered with Total Boat on a lot of our projects so we definitely use a lot of Total Boat, Total Boat products here Total Boat has a pretty big line of resins for makers and artists and woodworkers, and we do have a separate video on that as well. Uh, so this is really just gonna be a top level primer. What I'm talking about here in this case is you need resin. That's what I'm gonna say. You're gonna need resin. You're gonna need wood to make resin and wood pieces. To get the specifics on what resin you're gonna need for what application, watch some of our other videos. Um, but the, as far as tools, you're gonna need consumables like stir sticks and buckets to mix your resin. And of course you wanna have graduated uh, labeled uh, buckets to make sure you can measure your resin appropriately. Um, you're gonna need a, either a heat gun or torch or both. So the heat gun and torch are really, really handy for A, popping uh, bubbles in your resin. So if you've, if you've never really poured resin before, what you'll experience is a lot of bubbles will come to the surface. Um, air that has been trapped in the resin will come to the surface. And the easiest way to get rid of those is just by going over them really, really gently like this with a torch, and I'm doing that fast for a reason, I'll tell you in a second, um, or with a heat gun. Um, I'm doing it fast because you really don't want to expose silicone molds directly to like a flame. So if you're doing it really, really quickly like that, just to pop bubbles, it's fine, but I would never hold a torch to a silicone mold. It's going to damage the mold. Don't do that. I talk about this, I talk about this in one of our other videos as well, but a mold release, uh, especially if you're using silicone molds like this, uh, is required and basically that's essentially a, um, a go-between between your mold and your resin and wood that allows you to easily demold your product from the uh, molds and without damaging them because uh, molds are expensive especially these large ones that we make here at Craft Elements and you want them to last as long as possible. 
So while I'm on that topic, if you are new to resin and resin and wood, craftselements.com, our company, has a ton of specialized large format molds specifically for resin and wood use. We've got preform molds like this, which are actually uh, really, really big on time saving because they've got things like preformed handles. So you don't have to worry about using templates or using your saw to cut and shape a handle. You can literally preform your wood, or not preform, pre-cut your wood, put it in the mold, uh, pour your resin, weigh it down, and then take out a near finish charcuterie board. Now I say near finish because that's gonna bring me to the next topic um, and our next set of tools, which are the finishing tools. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I've been in this particular shop for three, three and a half years at this point, and I really only use one sander. I use this palm sander. Um, in my case, I've got it attached to our vacuum system, but there are many, many other palm sanders and orbital sanders like this on the market. Here's a rigid battery operated one, which is obviously a little bit more expensive. This is something around like the $200 price range where this is like 90 to maybe 119. Um, because it is not battery operated, it's hardwired. But the advantage of the, of course, the hardwired ones is typically they have bigger motors, but they last longer. You can run this thing all day. This thing needs, you know, recharged every half hour unless you have an endless supply of batteries. So some advantages and disadvantages there. Um, and that's really all I use. I mean, I do have another sander uh, over there. It's a table tap sander, which I'll, I'll go to over in a minute. Um, but I rarely use it. For vast majority of things, I'm just using my orbital palm sanders. All right, over to this section of the shop is where I have my planer set up. I've got it recessed into um, my countertop. Uh, people who watch my videos are always like, wow, that's such a good idea. It must help with a uh, snipe. A uh, snipe is essentially where you plane something, but the, the board either enters or exits a little bit of a different angle and you end up with a slightly lower part of the board. Not to be talked about in this video, but anyway. This doesn't help with snipe. I've, I thought it would. I thought it would give me a nice light and nice level surface, but really it's just more of a convenience thing to have it recessed here. You definitely don't need to have uh, your planer recessed below a countertop. Most of the time they're sitting on a, um, on a tabletop. And there are additional uh, leaves you can get for most planers, which will extend that work surface. So you start in and leave with a smoother, longer surface, which uh, reduces uh, planer snipe. Anyway, if you're not familiar with a planer, let me just explain this briefly. A planer, what it does is it creates, obviously it's got a nice metal bottom surface. So you've got a flat, perfectly flat edge that's going in. And when you, whatever you put in, uh, assuming it has an uneven surface, like, like if you're pulling uh, um, a piece out of a resin and wood mold, maybe your wood's a little higher, maybe your resin's a little higher, you want everything the same level. You wanna take all the excess stuff off, whether it be excess wood or excess resin, make it all the same level. That's what the planer does. Some people that are new to resin and wood say, oh, I'll just use a sander. I tried that. I tried that five years ago. I was like, I don't need a planer. I'll just, you know, hand sand it with a really hot, a lo really low grit sandpaper. Uh, it took me probably all day just to remove, you know, a 16th inch of resin off this tabletop I was working on. So you don't want to do that. You need a planer. Um, if you don't, if you're dealing with small pieces like charcuterie boards or maybe even small tabletops, this one will do up to 13 inch wide by a limited length. So, you know, you could have a 13 inch by 36 inch board. This, this will plane that and level it down. Once you start, um, doing bigger things, this will no longer work. You need a slab leveler, slab leveling jig, or something like a CNC machine, or an industrial planer, something that's 30 inch, 40 inch, 52 inches wide. So if you're doing tabletops, for example, and you wanna get into that, you're not gonna buy your own 52 inch planer. I can almost guarantee that because they are 50 to $200,000, depending on which one you buy. But you can often rent time uh, at local wood shops or wood processing facilities where they'll charge you 50 or 20 or 100 bucks an hour, depending on their rate, to use their big industrial planer. So you can actually put your table in the back of your car, in your truck, bring it over there, run it through their big planer and save you a bunch of time. If you did not want to take the planer, if you want to take that route and you're doing big objects, like I said, using a slab leveling jig um, is something that you want to consider. I had a slab leveling jig when I first started out um, when I was making, you know, four six foot long tabletops, essentially what it is, is it's two rails uh, and then a cross member section where your router will sit on. And then that router has a slab leveling bit, which is essentially a very, very wide bit that spins around and you go up and down and side to side on this um, 
this jig, and that does essentially the same thing a planer does, just a lot slower and much, much messier. However, I no longer have a slab leveling jig because I have a CNC machine. CNC machine will do it automatically. I'm not going to talk about the CNC machine in this video because that's if you are looking at buying a CNC machine, your the content of this video is far below what you need to know. So a CNC machine is definitely a big step up and it's a big expense. We're talking about getting down to the basics of uh, what shop tools you need to make small resin and wood projects. That's the focus of this video. So while we're talking about routers, let's go on to our routers and router table and we'll talk about those, what those are used for and really what they cost. A router is something you may or may not need if you're doing uh, small woodworking projects. I would probably lean towards you will need one, whether you need a router table or a handheld router, that's kind of up to you. Uh, but essentially, what is a router? A router is going to enable you to do things like uh, chamfering edges, rounding edges. There's a lot of different router bits available. Um, so I'm going to bring these close to the camera. But these bits would be used on a router to give you a nice round edge. So it'll round off the edge of your entire board, whatever you're working on. Um, there's also bits like this. This bit's installed in my router table. This is a flush trim bit. It's for, used for things like templates. So our, we actually carry here at Craft Elements a complete line of pre-shaped acrylic templates. These are what make um, making the handles and other more precise shaped cuts of our products and our customers' products possible. And essentially what happens here on a router table is this template lines up with the router bit and there's a little bearing on top of this bit and when this bit when this bearing goes around the router template your wood would be underneath the blade on the bottom of this bit trims the wood to the exact profile of this router template and what these are good for is really taking the guesswork and effort out of shaping wood but again, you wouldn't necessarily need a template if you're just freehanding everything or using a jigsaw or a bandsaw, for example. So this is a handheld router. There's also a plunge option for that. Plunge meaning it will sit in a case that goes up and down so you don't have to worry about fiddling around with changing the level of it, but you can actually push on it to go down, pull on it to go up. That would be the plunge router, which is what you would get at the most basic level. Um, otherwise, you could go to a router table, and a router table, all it really is, is a handheld router mounted underneath a panel, and that panel's got a big hole in it, and it's a flat surface to allow you to have more uh, control over what you're doing. So instead of having to, you know, hold your router, move it around your board, or whatever, maybe, you know, risk having it not level, the router table stays level, and you would take your wood, this is not wood, but, you know, just follow me here, and you would just run it along the bit as the router table goes, uh, as the router table spins. So at the bare minimum, you'll probably want to get a handheld router if you're going to do some basic edging and shaping. Uh, it definitely helps you clean up and make a, a little bit more professional look to your boards, your boards, and, and, and uh, wood and resin art projects. So a router is something you'd get. And realistically, if you're going to get the router, a router table is not that much more. This one is probably one of the cheapest ones you can get, but I said I'd talk about this a little bit earlier in the video. This is a, a rotational or rotary sanding table. Uh, and this part rotates and oscillates, which basically means it goes up and down and it spins. And there's different attachments you can get for it, um, like this, which is a, essentially uh, a large continuous piece of sandpaper. Um, I rarely use this, and this is only something you would have to get and invest in if you were doing a, a lot more production. Um, if you're doing a few boards a month or a few pieces a month, you really don't need this. But if you want to save time, these aren't that expensive, uh, three to $400 for something like this machine, and it will save you time in sanding. But otherwise, like I said earlier in the video, I'm really just using my hand sander, my orbital palm sander, to do the vast majority of sanding on these small resin and wood projects. So if you got this far in the video, you're probably watching, okay, it's great, I wanna get started. This is a really cool craft. I wanna make, make this a hobby or a business. You know, what's it gonna cost me? I mean, I can't really speak to, you know, how much wood or resin is gonna cost you. That's always variable on how much you're gonna use. But really on what we covered in the last 10 minutes or so here in the shop, I've put together an Amazon list from amazon.com. We've got a, um, a heat gun, a router bit set, uh, a DeWalt cordless drill, a DeWalt jigsaw, a DeWalt router with a uh, plunge kit. We've got a benchtop router table. You can attach that uh, router to. Uh, we've got a DeWalt sander, a DeWalt miter saw, which is the, the chop saw, uh, essentially. 
uh, DeWalt thickness planer, which is probably the most expensive out of, uh, of all the tools. And then you've got a DeWalt 10-inch uh, table saw uh, with a stand. And that grand total comes to just over 2,100 US dollars. Keeping in mind that DeWalt is not a super low-end brand, you can definitely, you could probably cut this down in half by buying used tools or lower end uh, private label tools from Amazon or Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. But by the same token, uh, this is relatively cheap if you're outfitting, you know, an industrial wood shop where, you know, a high end planer could cost you five or 10 or $20,000, right? So it's all kind of uh, relative and in perspective. But again, in this video where we're talking about what you need to get started doing small wood and resin projects, $2,000 uh, for this stuff, plus maybe another four to $500 in your small tools, your consumables like sandpaper and router bits and, uh, you know, um, you know, screwdrivers and things like that. Uh, just the small items that you, you probably aren't gonna use very often, but that are going to be there in case you need them. Uh, you can definitely get started with two to $3,000 and you can outfit yourself with a nice, a nice wood shop that you can um, start this hobby with or even a small business. Well, that basically comes to the end of this video. I hope you found it really informative. Um, it really should show that anybody uh, with a little bit of will, a little bit of money, and the desire to learn can take up this craft, take up this hobby, start a small business uh, doing things like this. Um, making wood and resin pieces using commonly available, relatively inexpensive tools. Whether you go and buy them all new or buy them used is completely up to you. But I just wanted to show you that you don't need an elaborate large shop. And this is honestly not even an elaborate large shop. Uh, there are certainly much, much bigger, much, much better things out there, but you can really get started as a weekend warrior working in your basement or garage and really pump out pieces just like this as long as you've got the right materials and the right basic tools. If you enjoyed this video and you found it informative, please make sure you subscribe to us here on YouTube. We have an entire series on resin and wood basics 101 that go into a bunch of different topics related to creating these things. And we also get into some more advanced stuff and actual practical examples of using our molds, templates, and other products to create unique resin and wood pieces. Once again, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day. Wait, you made it all the way to the end of this video, which means you get an exclusive 10% discount on anything from craftelements.com or totalboat.com. All you need to do is enter coupon code ERWBVS at checkout. That's ERWBVS. This coupon code is going to get you an instant 10% discount on any of the time-saving molds, templates, or tools at craftelements.com. Or head over to totalboat.com and use the code to get some amazing epoxy resin at a 10% discount.